what is your personal relationship to movement? Now, my personal relationship to movement has been a total wild adventure. So I grew up in a super, super conservative, evangelical situation. And uh, at a young age, there were certain movements that were very much encouraged, very much celebrated. If I think about movements like this, or I think about movements like this, or I think about movements like this, those movements were definitely encouraged. Movements like this, or movements like this, that was weird. We got to stay away from those things because the devil might be somewhere inside those movements. Um, if you've ever seen the, the movie Billy Elliot, that was very much my life story, and I was able to find a secret way to encourage you know, my dance ability. Uh, I told my parents that I was going to a Bible study. I was actually going to ballet class. <laughs> and then uh, eventually I was able to move out of that, and I worked with Beyonce and Black Eyed Peas, and uh, if you remember the Step Up movies, uh, Channing Tatum, I was able to experience that. And it was a beautiful, beautiful adventure. It took me to Singapore in 2009. And at that point, I started to develop some really serious back issues, shoulder issues, knee issues. And my entire career, people had told me, there's going to be a point in time where you just got to quit. That happens to every dancer. It's the sad day of retirement. Fortunately, I found physical therapy. And I was like, wait a second. This is incredible. Why don't more people know about this? which allowed me to start reframing my relationship to movement. And so I want to think about three things. First of all, our expectations around movement, the way we interpret movement, and then ways in which we can make movement more inclusive. So when we think about expectations, around movement. Has anyone ever been to, let's say, a yoga class or a breathwork class, and the very first thing that's offered is, set your intention. Has anybody experienced that? <laughs> Unfortunately, if you start there, you're too late. Because at that point, you're already in the space, and you walked in with some expectations. So we have to address the expectations that you walk in with before you're able to set an intention. Otherwise, you walk into the most amazing sushi restaurant and walk out unhappy because it was the worst pizza of your life. <laughs> That's because you were expecting pizza, not sashimi. OK? So let's talk about expectation. If you go back in history and you look at populations that were oppressed, subjugated, enslaved. There were movements and words and language around movements that were applied to people's human bodies. And these are really rough words. These are aggressive words, in some way destructive, in some ways abusive words. Words like whip, burn, torch, rip, shred, cut, smash, crush, grind, beat, kill, destroy, assault, incinerate, murder. And unfortunately, those are the words that have been adopted by the fitness industry. You whip your body back into shape. Incinerate your thighs. There's a machine called the assault bike. And all of this subconsciously starts to affect our relationship to movement, and our expectation around movement. So we have to understand that there's a reason why a lot of people are really resistant to movement. And it affects your relationship to movement. It's not anchored in pleasure. It's anchored in something which is, uh, I have to go suffer. Now let's talk about the ways we interpret movement. This is really interesting. Um, I was having a conversation in the very early days of COVID with a friend of mine, Dr. Ariel Bailey, who is a respiratory physical therapist. And she told me something very interesting. She said, 
when the COVID patients were having trouble breathing, there were two different situations. One's called asphyxiation, which means that you can't breathe. Your lungs don't have the capacity to <clears throat> The other one's called asphyxiation, which means you can breathe in, but you don't have the strength to <clears throat> breathe out. In other words, the flow of air in and out of your lungs gets stuck. Every single time you breathe and move air in and out of your lungs, something really interesting is happening. The environment is something that you take oxygen into your lungs. And then your body reconstitutes it on a chemical molecular level and then gives it back to the environment as CO2. And that CO2 goes over here into a tree or into a flower or into grass, and it's reconstituted back into oxygen. And this movement of oxygen to CO2 in and out of your lungs, in and out of the foliage, creates this beautiful loop of give and take. And it's all based on the relationship of movement and breath. We like to say that breath is the bridge between the body and the brain. I like to think about your breathing is kind of like a Wi-Fi signal. You got the cloud and you've got your physical device. And if the bars of Wi-Fi are about one bar, things aren't communicating very efficiently. But if I start to breathe, I got five bars of Wi-Fi and downloads and uploads are very efficient different ways of interpreting this idea around movement. The last thing I'm going to say has to do with the language that we use around movement. Um, I, I've stopped using the word class, yoga class, dance class, boot camp class, because what I realized is that the word class comes from the word classification. And when you're in an environment where there's a teacher, and then there's a ranked judgment, A, B, C, D, and F, suddenly we start to wonder, how do I level up in this movement class structure? That's why we have upper class, middle class, lower class, top of the class, bottom of the class, best in class, worst in class. And the reality is, when we are moving together, this is not a class structure. This is an experience that we co-create together. Another word that I think we need to look at is this idea that with regard to movement, there is a option or a level, which inherently implies that there's competition. Level one, level two, level three. And when it comes to movement, there's different variations. I might decide that today I want to move in a big way, and then tomorrow I might decide I want to move in a small way. Have you ever heard the phrase, you're not in competition with anyone, but actually, no, you're not in competition with yourself because how my body wants to move today might be different than how my body wants to move tomorrow. And that's OK. In fact, that's encouraged. The last thing I'll say around the movement and the language around movement has to do with this beautiful world. I love this word, which is preference. How do you enjoy moving? If I were to take everyone's seamless orders and someone says, I would love extra jalapenos, and someone says, actually, hold the jalapenos, that's a preference. But somewhere along the line, we started to apply this class structure, this competition around movement. And we do this thing called compare and despair. Anytime we're in a movement environment, we look around and we see, how do I level up? But the reality is that movement is not a competition. Movement is a conversation between my body, my breathing, and my brain. So with all of that context, we're going to do a little bit of movement. And remember that it's not a competition. Interlace your fingers. Bring your hands up to your chest. Flip your fingers and imagine you have a little toy boat and you blow into the sails. 
And then you take your arms overhead and you stretch like you're getting out of bed just because it feels good. And then your fingers come down the window like little drips and you touch your thighs. And we do it again, breathe in. And when you exhale, you extend your elbows out and you drop your head to the floor and then you lift your hands and your head up, up, up and just relax. Now, inhale and exhale. Inhale overhead and exhale release. Feels good to feel good. Breathe in and breathe out. Lengthen and lift. And now open your mouth, a sigh of relief. Remember, it's not an audition. It's not a competition. Inhale and exhale. Nice. Do it one more time. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale, stretch. And exhale, relax. Good. Now we go like this. One, two. Three, four, five. Now I need your help. Out loud. Five, four, three, two, one. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. And a five, four, three, two, one. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Do it in your own way. Five, four, three, two, one. Are you ready? Two. Four, six, eight, ten. Ten, eight, six, four, two. Are you ready? Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. <laughs> fifteen, twelve, nine, six, three. Who's cocky? Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Twenty. Eight. Try it again. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Badass. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, Here we go. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Now relax. Good. All right. Now your brain is firing. You're breathing. And we're going to do one more exercise. So, all right. Inhale. Exhale. Remember, there's no competition, just conversation, something that we create together using movement with a breath in, a breath out. Now, keep going at your own speed. Everyone has their own rhythm. Keep going at your own speed. And you realize that you can do this movement in a way that is small, sitting in your chair, you could also do the same movement in a way that's big. You could make it more soothing and therapeutic. You could use your fist. You could use your wrist. You could use your head. You could use your shoulders. You could use it small. You can make it big. One more time, breathe in. Gorgeous, we're ready to go on tour. I love it. One little last little magic detail. So when I came today, I thought to myself, hmm, I got some points that I wanna make. I need to remember, how do I remember these points that I wanna make? Because I'm gonna be talking to people. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna make a little dance. So I said, expectation, exit sign, interpretation. Ah, this looks like the letter I. And I said, hmm, language, language, the outside light. 
So while I was over there, in my head, I was moving so that I could remember what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much.